Welcome everyone to episode 9 of Action RPG Game in Unity. Move speed and updating interaction system. Let's begin by introducing a move speed. So open character script and let's add a new statistic called move speed. With move speed being added, we want to change the actual speed of moving of our character based on the character stats move speed. Future Greg here. You might encounter an error called an out of order execution error. It will cause your character to throw a null reference error. To attempt to solve this, put the character movement late in execution order, like I do right now on the screen. Back to the usual program. So to read the move speed in the character movement, we need to cache the character reference. and use this value to modify the speed of NavMesh agent. Actually, let's extract the default move speed into serialized variable. Default move speed represent base speed at which this character moves. Good. So now if I change default move speed or value of move speed on init, it will change the speed of movement of our character. But at the runtime, if I change any of those values, nothing will be changed. Because we calculate our move speed of the nav mesh agent at the start of the game. Open the character move. Let's save the reference to the move speed stats into the variable. Extract the process of calculating the move speed for agent into separate method. And in the update, if the value of move speed changes, we want to call update move speed to update the move speed of the agent.
This is not very efficient way to do this. We will be optimizing game later on in the tutorial. So now if we change value of move speed, our character will speed up or slow down. Ok, we have an error. Oh, it is an order of execution error. We need to put character movement to be executed after character is initialized. If you have done this before, then don't worry, it's ok. Ok, as you can see, we can attack the enemy. Enemy takes damage. But after reaching 0 HP, enemy is still there. It's not dead. Like it doesn't react to exhausting all of his HP in any way. Let's remove unnecessary debug messages. So when we getting defeated, we want to play a defeat animation. In the animator controller, add a new animation called dead. Add the defeated parameter. Add transition from each state and remove exit time so it will be played immediately when condition is met. In the animate script, we want to animate the character defeated state. To do this, we will need to cache the character component. And inside character script, we want to add a new bool variable called is dead. Which will be turned true when your character run out of health. So if we now attack enemy until he run out of hit points, the enemy will collapse in defeated animation. Good. Please consider supporting me on Patreon. You will get cool perks like being featured like those cool people you can see right now on your screen. Or you will get access to the uh, project files. Right now if I press interactable object, I will immediately interact with this object. What we want to do is to make your character walk towards the interactable object. And only then activate the object.
So in interact input script, when we call interact on the selected object, we want to store the reference to the object we are interacting with. Then similar to attack handler, we want to process the interact with the object. This means we need to determine if the object far away from us. And if it is, then we move towards the object, and only when we are inside the range of interaction, we will interact with the object. To move character, we need to cache the component. Then use character movement component to move your character towards the interactable object. And after we are approached the object, we interact with it and stop our character from moving. When we're done interacting, nullify the interacted object, meaning we're done working with this object, and we can dispose of it. Now in the update, if we have interacted object, we want to process interact. So let's test this. Set the interact range to be, let's say, 1.5. And with this, we should be able to interact with our transition object. Good, this is it for this episode. Special thank you to Andrew Vilong, the old Hashdu, NLP Massive, and Fari Pese. With best regards, see you in the next episode.